Hey everyone, today we're going to have a look at another gadget that you didn't know you want. The Evil Rank DID. So disclaimer first, Simrace Shop did send me one of those Evil Ranks for free for the review, but they don't get to see the video before it's posted and all the opinions are my own. Also, we'll do a giveaway. I'll let you know how to enter it at some point in this video. So what is it? You probably all know the Lumi rank and the Evil Rank DID that stands for Driver Information Display is pretty much a clone of that and it can show you a lot of stuff. I think the original Lumi rank only shows you flags. The Evil Rank can do that, but it can do a lot more. So the basic specs first, we have a 4-inch Vocor in a very nice aluminium housing. The build quality is very good, as it should be for the price of 199 euros, including taxes. I think for a dashboard, that's pretty much in the middle range. It's not cheap, but there are definitely way more expensive dashboards out there. The internals do look very clean. It's just the connector that connects to the USB port of the Vocor internally. And the display is held in place by a nice little bracket. One thing I do not like is they use a weird proprietary connector with... I don't know, so it looks more like the real thing, I guess. I would have loved to just see a USB-C instead, but I guess why they went with this, I just don't like it. But yeah, I don't want to talk too much about the specs and everything. I mean, it's just a Vocor display in a nice looking housing. We'll hop into SimHub, I'll show you how to set it up, and then we'll hop on track and I'll show you all the features of the dashboard. So the setup is very easy. First thing you do is download the dashboard file from them, uh, double click it, so SimHub will automatically install it. Then what you want to do is obviously open SimHub, go to the devices section and click on add new device and just select Vocor on the side and then generic Vocor screen. And we see the device already powered up. What I can recommend is if you have multiple devices like me, go and pick the correct screen. In my case, that's the screen ID this, but you just got to play around and see which is the correct ID. I have four Vocors connected right now because why not? <laughs> Next thing, just select the dash in the drop down here. It's called Evil Racing Evil Rank, and then we will already see this fancy looking animation. And then there are basically two ways how to control it. You can either control it using the touch screen or you can control it using any joystick buttons. I'll show you both. To use the touch screen, make sure to use the advanced touch mode. Then go to controls and assign the following four functions. Show next dash screen. And now you just want to click in the top right corner, previous dash, top left corner, trigger dash action A would be the bottom right corner, and trigger dash action B, the bottom left corner. And that's pretty much it. The menu works automatically, but we'll go into the game and then we'll try it out. We're going to use ACC for that because it has some very nice features for tire temperatures and stuff and iRacing doesn't give us that information so full functionality basically only on ACC. By the way to mount it it comes with an adapter M5 to a quarter inch camera thread so what you can use is these little small rig magic arms to mount it in whatever position you want. That's how I mounted it on the rig here. It's in a very odd position so the camera can capture it but I can really recommend to get one of these magic arms for mounting. All right, so here in the game we can already see it tells us engine is off, so let's turn it on. Ignition, engine on. And you see it, it gives you some very nice information of what's happening in the, in the car right now. And before we go into all the pages, I want to show you that menu first, if you use the touch screen. So you can either, if you press it in the top area here, you can go through the pages. And in the bottom you can go through the widgets. Or if you click in the middle, it will open this menu. And then you can select whatever you need here. But we'll actually not use it like this because I find touchscreen while racing, uh, it's impossible to use. If you have a wheel with 2000 buttons, you can use that. If not, you can just buy the GSI Hyper P1 and then you have basically 2000 buttons. So let's assign all the functions to the wheel buttons now. How to do it? Pretty much the same. You just go here, go to change, and then we're gonna change this to the wheel instead and now we can switch the different widgets and pages using encoders on the wheel or buttons or whatever but since this is relatively small i will just put it on the screen as well all right i think that is easier for you going to see what's going on uh, to see all the nice features this dash has okay so let's turn on the car So this is the basic page, which is pretty much like a regular Lumi rank display would work. Uh, it just shows you the different flags and if somebody's spinning you will have a yellow flag and stuff like that. It's very cool. 
in your peripheral vision. I typically have it in that mode because I do have a dash here, so I don't really need all these sub pages. Um, but if you use it as, a, as your only dash, for example, or if you want to use all the nice features, like see now, green flag, uh, it can do a ton. So you do have the widgets, as you can see in the bottom left corner there. For example, a position widget. Let's see if this works on ACC, because ACC and the positions, I don't know what the hell is so difficult in having working standings, but apparently it is. So this will update whenever we cross the next sector, I think. These three LED looking things, it's just, it's the ball core. It's not like it's a different display, it's just like the aluminium housing just covers parts of the display and it has a cutout in this area, so it just looks like extra displays. But yeah, there are several things that you can set here. Or well, see, now we are apparently position 11 according to the ACC telemetry, or oh, position 6 now. Um, but yeah, this is the basic page. Let's go to the next one. That is a fuel calculator. So this will obviously tell you how much fuel you have, 62 liters right now. Once you've completed a lap, it will update and show you the fuel consumption and how much fuel you need to finish and stuff like that. It takes the data from SimHub. I would say it's mostly accurate, maybe a little bit on the conservative side, but it's definitely better than not having a fuel calculator at all. Oh, especially, I think, we actually don't have fuel consumption in the AI race here. So we can ignore that here, but it will typically, well, show you fuel consumption and other things. Next page, tire widgets, very important on ACC. Tire pressure simulator, you can even see the brake temperature here. Getting warm if I go on the brakes. Red now. And yeah, on ACC we have tire pressures in real time. That is pretty cool. Colors will change, you will see the, the tire wear here and yeah, it's it's a nice visual representation. And let's go to the next page. That tells me how much time there is left in the race, I think. It's also a very basic dash, just time left and the position you're in. Then we have a relative, very nice. Apparently we are Dries van Tor. I don't really know where it gets the data for the relative. It's typically insanely inaccurate for ACC. Even though it looks okay-ish here, I would say. So if you want to just show a relative there, this is one of the features. Oh, there's an Audi next to us. Then we have a spotter. Let's see if it actually works on ACC here. Yeah, you can see. When there are cars next to us, it will... Awa. It will show that. Come on, AMG, pass me. Hey, here. Now it's next to us, so we have that red light. Very, very useful. I mean, ACC has a very good radar integrated. So whether you need it or not. But it's there. Especially useful for iRacing, for example. Very, very nice. Then there's a page that actually looks very cool. It shows you the RPMs in that colored bar and then gear and speed. The only problem is here you can really notice the bad refresh rate of the Vocor displays. Because if you look at what I show on the screen here in the middle and then if you look at the camera on the left, it's just not insanely good looking on the Volcor because you can see how every line is like getting built up and yeah maybe I would just like make colored lines on the left and right side to not really because if you really look at it it's kind of distracting but that's just like Volcor things it's it's a 24 hertz display I think so there's only so much you can do over USB 2 at that resolution okay then the next page Track map, you can see we are P14 here right now and it shows you uh, the track temperature and the air temperature and some other stuff. Oh, it actually shows you the, the weather development here in ACC, well that is pretty cool. It's insanely useful for iRacing. <laughs> Soon, oh god. Soon, iRacing please, we need, we need weather, give it to us. But yeah, these are pretty much the features 
that you have. And this is just like one of those things that looks cool in the rig. It's definitely nothing that's really necessary or something. But I personally think it looks very, very cool. By the way, the giveaway, if you want to enter it, just leave a comment down below and maybe let me know what kind of videos you would love to see in the future, what reviews I should do next. And yeah, then you'll enter the giveaway. And I will draw a winner at the end of next week. But yeah, it's a very, very nice little gadget. For example, this, this Delta in the widget option here now will turn green if we are quicker than the lap time, red if we are slower, as you can see here. Um, oh my god, my driving is like, why is this even like showing a little bit of green? But there are several little things you can use, ERS, deltas, nothing, flags, fuel, position. Um, a nice little add-on in the corner. But yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have to say about this. Like I said, 199 euros. I think the price is okay. Pretty much in the mid-pack of dashboards. Build quality is very good. It's definitely nothing that you really need. But I think it's a very cool widget to add to your rig, to give it more immersion, to have something in between screens and your eyes always helps. And yeah, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. Well, you know how this goes. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye bye.